我唔该晒，我一个人先讲咗。咁我哋會由我哋嘅中文 speaker 開始睇先。革命未警，疫情未定，政權依舊命還不靈。對民意示弱無睹，自民生不顧，繼續極盡殘害香港人。近日反民主派嘅議員頻頻出頭獻媚，希望推動廿三條立法，方稱能夠維護他國安全。廿三條對香港人嚟講係一個夢魇。言論係我哋敢於以死相搏嘅一項自由。袁國勇教授尋日朝早喺《明報》上敢於批評，喺同一晚就喺深圳位置入面低頭認錯、切稿、判約兩人，不禁令人心寒。廿三條未正式立法，但係已經達到禁聲之用。極權面前，連公義同科學都只能夠露顏悲失，讓路於橫麻同愚昧。十七年前，我哋守過一仗；十七年後，即使惡法重臨，相信香港人亦都有足夠嘅智慧同勇氣去將惡法推倒。但可怕嘅係，廿三條除咗可以以單一條例形式立法。亦都可以透過強行解釋、扭曲現行不同條例、僭建式立法，種種舊時學法，可被援引作為對極權眼中危害國家安全嘅行為而借屍還魂，迫害抗爭者。港共政權早於六年前已經援引過條文粗疏嘅沉睡惡法。造控並污名化抗爭者。二零一四年雨傘革命，以公安條例起訴黃之峰等人非法集結及煽動行為。二零一六年魚蛋革命，以公安條例入邊嘅暴動或煽惑暴動等罪名，首次起訴梁天琦同一眾義士。其後又以社團條例禁止香港民族黨運作。過去大半年，魔警同律政司濫用暴動罪名，控訴數百名抗爭者，迫使抗爭者喺未經判罪之下接受嚴苛嘅保釋條件，嚴重侵害其人生嘅自由。公安條例已於一九六七年。為使策動六七暴動嘅共產暴徒更易入罪，條例取消咗共同目的作為重要控罪元素，即係話不論行過路過，一旦出現喺現場，亦都能夠控以此罪，以平定政治風波而修訂嘅舊法，成為政權打壓意見者最方便嘅工具。另外，《公安條例》關於非法集結以及暴動嘅條文，詞性含糊不清，控罪所謂嘅破壞社會安寧，並沒係冇指涉及實質舉動或者係暴動嘅行為，淪為政治濫告嘅手段。含糊不清嘅條文造成寬鬆嘅指引，給予警方過高嘅權力執法。唔單止係咁，政權喺舊年為過為咗繞過立法程序，援引咗殖民統治時期制定嘅緊急法，以行政嘅手段啟用咁蒙面法，不擇手段咁去打壓抗爭。雖然最後咁蒙面法被判違憲，並且並且將佢推倒，但以行政嘅手段。去左右司法系統嘅舉止，創下咗極壞嘅先例。政權現時繼續以上述嘅過時舊例，以中國式法治嘅幌子，喺欠缺現代人權考慮同真正法治嘅修訂下，繼續濫告抗爭者，以法例嘅名目
行為國安，行為護國安。喺現時濫用暴動嘅罪名之下，有無辜嘅市民被還押咗超過兩個半月，先因為證據不足而撤銷控罪，重獲自由。足見種種舊例。唔單止令無數嘅人嘅自由受到限制，喺收押所白白虛度咗大好嘅年華，更加令到本應獨立嘅司法機關淪為政權爪牙。日前，鄧炳強高調咁受訪，稱會以聯合國反恐怖主義措施條例，檢控早前爆炸品案被告。若此話成真，將會係呢條條例成立十八年以嚟首次嘅提高。呢次嘅手段非常之明顯，係極權政府再進一步咁對內打壓香港人，對外污名化香港人追求民主嘅意念。按現時嘅反恐條例，政權一旦鎖定咗你係目標嘅犯人。就能夠以極高嘅權限作出控控罪同禁制。如果你被懷疑作為所誒作所謂恐怖分子，或持有指明目的作出策劃、籌備、參與一項或多於一項所謂恐怖主義行為，即使實際上係並沒有發生，條例入邊給予執法者權力。凍結市民財產，禁止市民出入境等。但現行嘅法例足見遲疑嘅粗疏，即使實際上冇恐怖主義行為發生，係開宗明義令政權可以砌詞造假，連莫須有嘅罪證都慳翻，以恐怖主義嘅名義合理化魔境、禁固異己等等嘅惡行。立法會曾經作出報告，香港受恐襲嘅威脅評估被評為中度級別，冇具體嘅情報顯示香港係可能成為襲擊目標。喺客觀嘅情況之下，動用反恐條例控告示威者，純粹係赤裸而卑劣嘅政治打壓。再者，控罪本身應該由律政司去提高。而鄧炳強高調嘅受訪，已經證明香港法治最高嘅權力已經交到黑警嘅手上。香港確實已經淪為警察國家。近日，警方亦派代表到聯合國顛倒是非，為過去嘅暴行砌詞狡辯。警方密羅緊鼓咁去洗白，同埋更越嚟恐怖主義嘅言論。唔難令人猜想到政權想以公權力向外國政府同埋公民抹黑香港人嘅抗爭運動，意圖令香港人失去追求公義民主嘅形象，影響國際嘅輿論。同時，按反恐條例二零一七年修訂版，政權能夠隨時禁止相關人士離境。不單止禁固其人身自由，更影響咗香港人出國參與國際會議、進行游説等等嘅工作，打擊表達自由同國際戰線。警方借用國際社會熟悉嘅字眼，污蔑香港人嘅行徑，意圖喺外國執法部門面前爭取認同，合理化打壓暴行。即使係國際公民，雪亮嘅雙眼面前，警方呢一個舉動未必能夠湊效，但都希望香港人能夠多加提防同反擊，盡量喺社交平台上澄清同道出真相。中共自古以嚟就污名民主，戰視人權，新疆西藏前居可鑑。面對人民爭取合法權益，充耳不聞，人民不滿就動接扣帽子反恐，以反恐製造恐怖
，以人民嘅怨對痛苦，換取權貴嘅紙醉金迷。回顧香港現行嘅法例，有唔少嘅舊例，因為時而失益，亦都風塵已久。但係港共快旅隨時以修訂、解讀等等嘅伎倆，舊例新用，殘民後快。抗疫嘅二零零三年同抗命嘅二零零三年，香港人都唔敢遺忘。以示廳堂早就淪為港共嘅屠房，磨刀霍霍。喺魔境律政嘅配合之下，不惜一切打壓抗爭。但香港人早已經唔一樣，我哋唔再懦弱，我哋絕對唔會屈服。即使係花果凋零，我哋都唔會忘記革命同義務。無論係文土戰線、議會戰線，亦或係文宣戰線、國際戰線，都仍然會繼續有我哋嘅脈搏，抗擊暴政，光復香港。Under the color of law, on the invocation of anti-terrorism ordinance against peace, the five demands of the Hong Kong protests, one of which was the retraction of the riot characterization to preserve judicial independence in Hong Kong, while reflecting the UN's internationally recognized freedom of assembly protection laws and right to protest for global citizens, have been the fundamental goal of our pro-democracy struggle. Hong Kong protesters aren't rioters; they're freedom fighters. This is one of our earliest and most persistent protest chants, because it is a truth we seek to hammer home to anyone who still does not understand that everyone is born with the right to free speech and the right to protest when things are not right. The Hong Kong and Beijing authorities, sadly, are just as persistent as we are. In dismantling, destroying, demolishing every pillar of universal human rights and values, under the color of law, both local and international, it is amusing to see how outlaws speak about legality, and how terrorists themselves speak about counterterrorism. On a very recent case of homemade bomb discovery, the police chief Chris Tang Ping Kong. Has declared that they may ch charge the accused with the United Nations Anti-Terrorism Measures Ordinance. It would be the first deployment of this UN Act on a court case since its enactment 18 years ago. This maneuver is yet another threat to politically persecute and prosecute Hong Kongers, and to slander our fight for democracy and freedom, the fight for our homeland, to the international audience. We need to emphasize here that the authorities have, time and again, illegitimately and unconstitutionally activated powers to criminalize the exercise of guaranteed human rights. <coughs> According to the latest revision of the Act, once authorities have targeted you as a suspect, they can execute near prerogative authority to impose charges and injunctions upon you. Terms on the Act are loosely defined. And are thus open to abuse and exploitation by neighbors' regimes. You could be identified as a suspected terrorist, or having been involved with clear intention in the devisal, planning, preparation, or participation of terrorism any moment they deem fit, without the instance of terrorism having taken place. The accusations would run on pure speculations, saving the authorities the need to fabricate evidence around your case. And the sly measures with which they still bother today, the police and the judiciary, who are all too willing to cooperate and act as a proxy under Beijing, would legitimise their continued crimes against dissidents under the colour of law. A report by the Legislative Council of Hong Kong has marked the risk of Hong Kong being subject to terrorist attacks as media. There is currently no sign or intelligence. Pointing towards Hong Kong being a target for terrorism. Against this backdrop, the use of this anti-terrorism legislation against protesters 
and political dissidents can only be pure political oppression. Moreover, judicial matters and queries should be handled by the Department of Justice. The fact that it was the police chief that spoke denotes that the highest legal power in Hong Kong has been handed down to the police force, the very group of people who have been terrorizing Hong Kongers ever since June 2019 and began the era of the police state. Locally, in Hong Kong, the pro-democracy movement is still ongoing, determinedly on a parallel track of the yet unsettled COVID-19 threat. While the city is still knee-deep in a whole spectrum of pressing crises, the regime turns to fiddle with the ratification of Article 23, with which any act of treason, succession, sedition, subversion against the central people's government, as well as ties with foreign political organizations, will be prohibited by law. Nothing that the Hong Kong authorities have done serves to defend the interest of Hong Kongers. Rather, it only serves to preserve the integrity of the ruling power and the so-called national security of the totalitarian state north of the river. We have fought away the enactment of Article 23 once, already in 2003, and we have faith that we will drive away the return of this already mummified legislative proposal with wisdom and courage once more. However, we worry that the most notorious parts of Article 23 will be excised and through processes of interpretation and amendment slipped into existing laws. The rule of law would become no more and rule by law will prevail with the implementation of Article 23 or its alternative in any form. Political imprisonment would be imminent for all. As early as six years ago, the Hong Kong authorities already displayed their penchant for prosecuting and vilifying dissidents by manipulating legal terms and resurrecting dead laws. The use of the public order ordinance against Joshua Wong and company for the 2014 Umbrella Revolution, and once again against Edward Lang in 2016, followed by the usage of the society's ordinance to exterminate the Hong Kong National Party, run by Chan Ho Tin, are only precursors to the yet larger scale poli political persecutions we are seeing today against pro-democracy protesters by arbitrarily charging them with rioting and forcing them into accepting harsh terms for bail before and without trial. The Public Order Ordinance was drafted in 1967 for the purpose of incriminating rioters instigated by communists. The ordinance omitted the criminal element of a common purpose for the offenses of illegal assembly and right. Anyone who appeared at the scene could be charged. The ambiguity of the criminal element has given the police excessive power to enforce the law. What started as a draconian law to resolve a public order crisis has become the most convenient tool for the regime to suppress its dissidents. Besides, provisions relating to these offenses are ambiguous and ill-defined. For example, a breach of the peace does not necessarily involve any actual conduct or rioting acts. Such offenses have only become a means for political persecution. Just months ago, in order to bypass the legislative process, the government invoked the colonial emergency laws to enact the anti-mask regulation in an attempt to further suppress the protest movement, a measure which was eventually de deemed unconstitutional, at least for now. Relying on an archaic ordinance and disregarding the need for revising this law because of modern human rights concerns, the government has carried on persecuting pro protesters in full Chinese-style rule-by-law fashion. Countless protesters have since wasted weeks or even months in custody with their liberty deprived. More recently, representatives were sent out by the Hong Kong Police Force to the United Nations Human Rights Council, joining a laughable collection of member states like Venezuela, Pakistan, Libya, DR Congo, and many more with questionable human rights records 
that ironically occupy seats on the UNHRC, to distort right from wrong and defend their brutal and war crime-like behavior. Noting the recent whitewashing and terrorism labeling, it is not hard to imagine the regime's plot to defame Hong Kong's movement in the eyes of foreign governments and citizens by tarnishing the image of desire for justice and democracy and influence popular opinions in the international community. Furthermore, under the Anti-Terrorism Measures Ordinance, amended in 2017, anyone deemed by the regime as a terrorist can be prohibited from leaving the territory, restraining one's individual freedom, placing severe limitations on attending conventions and international lobbying efforts of Hong Kongers. Rhetorics familiar to the international community were used by the Hong Kong police force to blemish the name of the pro-democracy movement and to gain recognition from foreign administrations for their brutal suppression of human rights. Although the international community may be lucid and educated about the truth, the Chinese communists have evidently ramped up their propaganda campaign. That is why we are speaking here today and urging all to guard against the Chinese state propaganda and keep the truth afloat. The Chinese Communist Party's stigmatization of pro-civil rights movements is anything but a first-time occurrence. The world has seen what happened in Xinjiang and Tibet. The same brutal repression of dissidents in the name of anti-terrorism and fear-mongering the public with their so-called localist terrorism discourse. While the police force serves as the militant front line against protesters in Hong Kong, archaic and often human rights violating laws can be mobilized against pro-democracy endeavors. Hong Kongers must not forget about the dozens of sharp blades already upon our neck. The Hong Kong government, a CCP puppet government, has long been sharpening its sword and is actively looking out for opportunities to kill off voices of dissent with aid from the police force and the teetering judiciary. We are not lambs. When dictatorship is a fact, revolution becomes a duty. Hong Kongers must not sit around and wait to be slaughtered. Just as we know where the virus originated from, we all know too well who the actual terrorists are. Our leadership is set on a war on peace, slandering freedom and peace-loving citizens on the international stage. But if you have ever be been to a demonstration in Hong Kong, then you'll understand that it is the protesters who protect civilians. It is the protesters who show the most humanity to each other and the locals and the visitors alike. It is the protesters who are the first to rush up and help those in need, giving them all that they have. You can hear it in their words and in their eyes that they are the ones who love Hong Kong more than they love their own lives. Therefore, the banner that we fly in the name of universal values and democracy will not be tainted as the CCP attempts to save its lost legitimacy with its people by demonstrating international prowess, infiltrating multinational institutions and establishments, and bribing its way through, we shall reclaim the discourse evermore and consolidate our voices among the international community and actively lobby for support from our international friends with whom we stand together as victims or yet gallant fighters against Chinese totalitarianism. International Division Member Mr. Wong Yip Mo. Mr. Wong Yip Mo. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we will go to the 
。嗱，香港疫情監察代表葉歡遊小姐，我哋講先嘅。Uh, Hong Kong will be our guest speaker. Hong Kong Human Rights Monitor representative Miss Claudia Yu. Before that, we would like to thank our venue, uh, Librarian Hong Kong today. Miss Claudia, please. Thank you, Hong Kong. First, um, thank you for inviting us to the Hong Kong Human Rights Monitor to share our views on this report. Thank you for inviting us to the Hong Kong. 咁誒、呃、香港人權監察咧就住，即係相信大家都留意到啦。警方喺誒三月頭嘅時候咧，派咗代表去聯合國人權理事會嗰度發言嘅。人權監察對於警方呢一個發言咧，表示非常之嘅遺憾，因為警方竟然將佢哋嘅大話咧，可以衝出國際去到聯合國嗰度去講。警方喺個會上面講話咧，警隊被指控警暴係因為一啲以暴力。勒索政府去爭取訴求嘅人刻意去抹黑警隊。事實上，無論係國際嘅人權組織、本地嘅人權組織、本地或者係國際嘅傳媒機構，都記錄到好多有誒、呃、有系統嘅警方嘅誒、呃、使用暴力、濫用權力嘅事件。連聯合國高級人權事務專員亦都曾經係多次。發表呢一個嘅文章啦，去去指出有呢一個情況，唔通人權組織、聯合國全部都係別有用心咁樣去抹黑警隊咩？警隊佢係一而再、再而三咁樣拒絕承認自己嘅問題，反而咁樣喺無論喺本地，甚至去到國際嘅場地，都咁樣去誒講、呃、大話，嘗試去掩飾。佢嘅行為，但係同時完全冇採取任何嘅行動措施去停止、去壓止呢一啲嘅警暴行為。呢一個係十分可恥、卑劣嘅行為。另外想回應嘅係，警方喺誒近日嘅一個報誒、呃、報章嘅採訪入面去表示話，考慮緊。使用反恐條例去檢控誒、呃、近日嘅一啲炸彈案嘅人士。首先澄清翻啦，佢係講緊考慮緊檢控啦，同埋係同律政司討論緊要唔要咁樣去檢控。暫時嗰個提出嗰、那個誒、呃、控罪咧，都仍然係以誒、呃、刑事條例入面嘅誒罪行去提出。但係警方而家咁樣去提出話要以反恐條例。去誒、呃、檢控誒呢一個個案咧，人權監察係表示非常之嘅憂慮。呢、这、一個反恐條例咧，當初食誒、呃、去定立嘅時候咧，誒、呃、嗰、那個過程係非常之嘅倉促咯，係冇充足嘅誒呢一個誒、呃、consultation 嘅，係冇充足嘅係冇充足嘅一個諮詢嘅過程，亦都係被批評咧入面嗰個對於。恐怖主義行為嘅定義咧係過闊，但係當佢係一個咁闊嘅條例嘅時候咧，佢嗰、那個誒、呃、帶嚟嘅刑事罪行嗰個結果嗰、那個後果啦，嗰、那個懲罰咧係非常之係嚴重，亦都係俾咗誒檢控部門或者執法部門咧一啲更加強嘅權力去誒。呃跟進呢一啲嘅個案，呢一個係一製造咗一個好大嘅漏洞啦，去俾誒政府去侵犯人權嘅。咁我哋參考翻誒、呃、一啲外國嘅誒、呃、經驗啦，佢哋都知道咧，如果係用一啲誒、呃、反恐嘅條例去打壓或者去處理一啲嘅誒抗爭嘅行為，其實。而而當中咧，如果係涉及一啲過度嘅誒、呃、侵犯人權啦，又或者係誒、呃、一啲過度嘅反應啦，其實係反而係會火上加油啦，令到誒、呃、個抗爭咧係更加嘅劇烈啦，亦都係持續地係會誒、呃、令到被針對嘅一個族群咧係感到係被誒。呃誒、呃、被排拒於外嘅
呢一個誒呢一啲嘅經驗咧，其實喺外國已經。